Greetings nice. to everyone. Hello and welcome. I am Merli Sokila Blaske. I am a Spanish Filipino living in Austria with my husband, Ferdinand Blaske. I am the country coordinator for Mother's Heart Network, a project of Women's Federation for World Peace Philippines. In behalf of Women's Federation Austria and Women's Federation Philippines, I am here to welcome you to today's event with the topic Permaculture Home Gardens. It's a great honor and privilege to welcome you for me to be here with you today. I want to express my gratitude first of all to our distinguished guests, the Filipino women leaders in Austria, especially the representatives from the Philippine Embassy in Vienna for joining this meeting. We hope that through this meeting, we can join our strength and collectively help our motherland, Philippines, and extend it to the world. I also want to thank everybody who helped to organize this Zoom call well, especially because everything happened on a very short notice. So in this case, I also want to thank the Family Federation and Women's Federation UN office in Vienna. Now, I want to pass the word to the President of Women's Federation for World Peace in Austria, Mrs. Renate Amis Bauer. Renate, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear Merle. It's a pleasure to see you. And I'm very grateful that you organized this evening. We're really very happy that we can meet all. We're going to meet all the ladies from the Philippines living in Austria. Uh, I'm very great thanks to Merle Plaske, Sokvila Plaske, because she did most of the work to bring us all together. I'm happy that we are going to listen to you. And I want to, I'm going to be the MC and I want to introduce uh, Dr. Maria Riel. She was the former president of the Women Federation. She brought the Women Federation to Austria and she is now the UN director of our Women Federation Vienna office. So please, Maria, the floor is yours. Thank you, Renate. Thank you very much. Everybody who is joining us today, especially that we can uh, unite or we can share our experiences with the ladies from Philippines. Uh, on in, we are supporting the work at the United Nations in Vienna. And the topic is always the migration. Uh, is it sometimes not so easy how we can support women and youth to use the situation to use the possibilities of education through technology or other on other ways to to recognize the possibility what they can do uh, in their own countries uh, when they receive good education how they can improve the situation in their own countries that we can develop the the countries and we can help each other that not to overcome the poverty. Poverty is number one in SDGs and we are very happy that we can introduce, could introduce in a 30th commission, Crime Commission Prevention Congress in Vienna three good projects how we can support women and youth to improve their situation 
in their own surroundment through good connection to each other. And especially uh, permaculture, what is near to me, I live also on countryside and I have a neighborhood I could visit also an agricultural project. And this is really very, very good to learn how we can, uh, how we can uh, develop our relationship to the nature. So we, how we can improve our environment. So thank you very much. And I wish everybody lots of learning and discovering new things. Thank you very much. I thank you very much, Maria Lin, for your very nice words to help us understand how we could come together today. Also, now we, as Women Federation, we are not working all by ourselves. We always like to cooperate with other organizations and partners. And we are a maybe special female group, a women group that really cherishes family. We support each other with our children. And so we also work together like to work together very much with the Family Federation. Also here in Austria, I think it's the same internationally. And so I really want to like to introduce Magister Elisabeth Cook and ask and please say a few words to us. She's I'm the president of the Family Federation of Austria. And I'm so happy to see you all. Um, good evening to all the dignitaries from the embassies and the ladies from the Philippines. We feel very honored to uh, have this seminar together. And I personally am also always very thankful to the ladies from the Women's Federation because they work for women, as Dr. Maya really said, for supporting women, uh, doing advocacy for women and supporting children. They have projects in different countries to support children, but also in Austria. So I'm Curious how this uh, cooperation uh, will continue in the future. And as soon as we can meet personally, we should have a meeting in Vienna with the ladies from the Philippines and uh, think what we can do together. So I wish you a very fruitful uh, and beautiful Zoom conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. So uh, now uh, we have the great honor. We also have representatives of the Philippine Embassy with us, Ms. Uh, Sherilet Criano and Ms. Dulce Cheka. And we would very much like invite you to say a few words to us. Please, Ms. Um, the floor is Yes, thank you, Mrs. Renate. Um, to the Women's Federation for World Peace, uh, the European Network Filipino in Europe and Austria, uh, the European Network Filipino International Diaspora in Austria, and the Verein Filipina in Österreich. Dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening from Vienna. Po. Uh, on behalf of the Philippine Embassy and Permanent Mission in Vienna, I wish to convey the warmest greetings from Ms. Dina Joy D. Amatong, uh, Charge of the Affairs of the Mission, who unfortunately cannot join this evening this, uh, event due to an earlier commitment. Nevertheless, uh, Charge de Affairs Amatong thanks the organizers for inviting the embassy to participate in what looks to be a very interesting event. Um, we also hope uh, it will turn out to be very fruitful for all who are with us tonight. So the Philippine Embassy wishes you all the best in this and in future undertakings. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Ms. Kayano. Uh, Ms. Cheka is also saying a few words. I don't know if you planned it. Did you want to introduce? Uh, yes, so um, um, this is my, uh, my uh, colleague, um, Mam Dulce Cheka. Um, maybe she can say hi. Yes, um, good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I think my colleague has already said uh, our um, our appreciation for the invitation. So just wish this um, uh, good luck and I hope that we can uh, learn a lot from this um, event. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for staying with us, for being with us, for joining this evening. Thank you. And now we have the great pleasure and we're very curious to learn, to get to know our ladies who are living in Austria all the time, but we didn't know, know them yet. There are several organizations of Philippine women in Austria. And so I have, uh, to me, three groups were mentioned, three ladies were mentioned that they are going to introduce themselves and their organization. So the first is Miss Marjorie Guidangen Akistov. Would you be so kind to introduce yourself and your group briefly? Mrs. Akistov, are you here? Yes, good evening, ladies and, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Marjorie Atistoy. Do you hear me? I'm sorry for uh, for my network problem because it was, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, my name is Marjorie Atistoy and I am a nurse by prof profession and I am uh, currently working as a nurse, uh, a registered nurse in uh, Vienna, Austria, um, in a government has, uh, hospital, one of the government hospitals here in, uh, in Austria. I come from uh, the mountainous region of the Philippines and uh, I belong to the uh, indigenous tribe uh, called the Igorots and have served the Igorot uh, Austria Association here in Austria for five years. And uh, <clears throat> I am currently the secretary of the Igorot Global Organization that is based in the United States. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I am the treasurer of the Global Save Life Foundation, which is based here in uh, Austria and currently the president of Philippines in Austria. And uh, I'm happy to introduce to you the Filipina in Austria, which I am serving as the president with women who assist um, the distressed uh, Filipinas in the uh, women here in Austria, like uh, assisting, assisting the battered wife, uh, battered women. And we are uh, gladly that we can uh, do social work. It is actually uh, serving the, 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 the people who are uh, the women, especially the women who are uh, in need and in distress. Uh, so we are composed of uh, actually women who, who have that passion of, uh, of serving and uh, assisting the uh, uh, whenever the difficulties and uh, uh, distress in, when they are when they are in distress, to give some uh, <clears throat> example or to give some uh, 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 cases which we have uh, you know which we have uh, uh, assisted during this uh, times of pandemic, especially uh, the, the time of pandemic, we have uh, assisted women who uh, who was battered, who was you know. Uh, who was, uh, uh, yeah, it is, he, she's a battered wife, and uh, it was really unlucky for her because uh, she, she, was, she doesn't know anything about uh, where to go and where to find help here in Austria. And so we are lucky to, to, uh, to, serve, uh, to serve in this kind of assistance and uh, we helped her, you know, to bring. Uh, we uh, we helped her in uh, in finding the uh, the right offices where she has to go, like the police and in the intervention steli, uh, the court, you know. And uh, she was able to <clears throat> uh, to to stand in her own now, uh, and that is a joy, you know, of of serving uh, uh, of serving in this kind of assistance. We were able also to connect with the embassy people, the Philippine embassy, and uh, uh, it is it, 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 that is what we are do, doing. We we do referrals, we accompany the person, and now we uh, she's already uh, she has already uh, she was stable. She's she's having a visa, although of course the result was a divorce. But she was able to to uh, to slowly. 
uh, surpass that uh, condition in the situ situation that she is in. Uh, so basically, that is what we are we are doing, and we are happy to network with you. Um, the Philippines and Austria are happy to network with the Women Federation uh, in Europe and the whole uh, uh, federation, the whole network of the Women Federation. Thank you. Uh, so thank you so much, and uh, we hope that we can be in touch more in. Uh, in uh, in a, in a deeper way. Uh, thank you so much and good evening to everyone. Thank you very much, Ms. Thank you very much, Mrs. Akistov. And we are also looking forward to meet in person when we can see in each other's faces. Thank you very much. Thank you. For uh, thank you. Tonight. So it, and then I would really very much like to introduce or ask Mrs. Marcel Rojas that uh, you say you introduce yourself in a brief way and your organization. Please, Mrs. Rojas, the floor is yours. Good evening from uh, Vienna, Austria. Behind me is the Danube River at sunset. My name is Marizel Rojas. Uh, Grüß Gott, guten Abend to the German speaking. And to my kababayan, magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Um, I would like to thank first and foremost uh, Merle uh, Blaschke for inviting me to this meeting. Thank you so much. Uh, greetings especially to Ms. Renate Ames Bauer, to our Philippine Embassy representatives, uh, Ms. Dulce Checa and Ms. Cherylet Quijano, and my fellow Filipina uh, women leaders here in Austria. As I was invited to the meeting, I told uh, Merle that I actually represent a dozen organizations. But I think uh, at least three of them would be relevant in terms of collaboration with your very active and very well-known uh, Women's Federation for World Peace. And these three are the European Network of Filipino Diaspora, the United Nations Women's Guild, and uh, the United, uh, the, the Filipina Women's Network, uh, Filipina, uh, um, Women's Network, which is based in San Francisco. I am here to listen. I am here to learn. I am especially very interested to listen to uh, uh, Miss Merle. Uh, uh, there are two Merle Barlaan uh, from the WFWP Philippines on her presentation about permaculture, home uh, and the gardens, the linchpin to food security and wholesome communities. I look forward to learning and to finding ways to collaborate with you. I also would like to congratulate you for the recently held uh, session that you had at the United Nations. Uh, uh, congratulations. I watched the video that you have on, on Facebook. Very well done. Fantastic. And I really wish you um, good luck in all your endeavors, especially those uh, that are related of course, to my country, projects in my country, and of course, anything about women. When we women, you know, empower others, we empower a lot. So uh, thank you for, for, very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Mrs. Rojas. It's very inspiring and listening to you again. We're very keen and curious to meet you in person, in the hope, hopefully in the near future. And now I have another wonderful lady, to present herself, Mrs. Cecilia Orola Czech. Mrs. Czech, please, the floor is yours. Okay, good evening to all, to everybody. I'm Cis My name is Cecilia Orola Czech. I came from Bacolod City, Philippines. Been here in Austria, Vienna since 1974 as the first recruited nurse of Ambassador Domingo Schiasson, the first batch of the Filipino nurses in Vienna, Austria. Since then, after two years, I got married to an Austrian and having the three kids and so on. Well, I'm giving only two minutes to talk, but I'd like to give you some more of our objectives being here in this women groups. Okay, I'm now retired and I'm still continue my service to the community and assisting women in distress. 1992, when I was sent in Barcelona to be with joining with the 100 Filipino nurses, Filipinos in Europe, and then we decided to form 
a group of women forums. And so from that time on, we become more united until in 1994, we decided to name it Babaylan. So this is the 100 Filipino women came again in Zurich, and this Babaylan is a Philippine Women Network in Europe. It's an initiative of the Philippine Women's Group and Women Desk in Europe. So this is the objectives that we wanted really to do it since 1994 when I took the name Babaylan from the Philippine and Austria, what I named before, and now it's become Babaylan in Europe, and now it's become Filipina in Austria after 28 years. That's, and when I talk to you, mom, Renati Amis Bauer, when we meet last time in karaoke, can you still remember? I like really to sit down with you. But then that was not the time. This time is my time and with you and everyone to share with you because I love really to work with this federation women. And I thank you very much, Merlin uh, Blatsky, that you let me join to this evening. And this main point that I like only to give because I have only one minute more to talk is the objectives of our Philippine Women Network in Europe that is under with the Filipina in Austria. Uh, I was a founder of that organization and until now I'm only an advisory. Uh, position to help and to more give dynamic and more empower to the members and to share what I had before. Now, the most things that we wanted to do, we have six objectives only that I really campaigned since 1994 up to 2021. That is to promote woman empower empowerment and full participation and development processes through the sharing of our experiences, information that we have had and resources there, we were able to contact the uh, international intervention woman here in Austria that helped us so much in helping us the women to put in the orphanage during their dark hours. To promote a liberating education program for women to tackle issue affecting women in Europe and the Philippines, strengthen Philippine women's group networking on the national level, especially our partner ever since the Philippine Embassy. I salute for them because they helped me so much for many cases. Thank you so much. And then is to establish link of support with women's group of other nationalities in Europe and in the Philippines. Now here I am at this time, mom, I'm we are here with you to be with you and to help us and to share us and to do more some works for our country and all over our networking global uh, federation women in peace. The projects that there were, our most important is to channel for campaign of women issues. That is the most important the illegal recruiter, the undocumented, the raping, the uh, demolished woman. We did that for almost 25 years, mom. And uh, with our group, we supported them for their emotional and especially helping them to come on again to their own feet. So, to mobilize participation and action of among Filipina through violence, Binyal General Assembly meeting. We have always a general assembly meeting every two years throughout the European rotation. So last time we have uh, in Rotterdam that we celebrated our 26th year of anniversary. And now we to promote communication channels and information exchanging our Filipinas in Europe and in the Philippines and throughout the world by setting up a data bank, our activities. So we need also facilitator training. We did that already for so many years. The woman orientation course to Philippines and Europe, we did it already for so many years. And imagine we're already in the 28 years of Philippine and Austria, the Babylon European Network. So we campaign 
for the illegal recruiting. Sorry, Especially sorry. the bicultural molestation, the slavery, we did that already for so many years and we won through the help of the Philippine embassy. So we uplift our morality and our identity that we can pass to our children, children to generation. And this is our legacy here, being here for 47 years in Austria. So to publish the Babylon, to publish the voices of our Babylon network, and that's what we are doing now. I will never stop as long as I can, as long as somebody can help us. And this is your Federation Woman, ma'am. And so we would like to be thankful that we organize and this network among women and the national here, especially I'm also connected with the, uh, in, uh, with the European network, Glo European network, Filipino global diaspora. My president is Maricel Rojas and I've been there for 2011. And thank you Maricel that you did a lot the work of 2017, we established the ENFIT, European Network Global, that we can connect the Filipinos abroad, not only women, but also Filipinos. And I'm so happy that Marjorie is now our present president. After the 28 years, we changed it to Filipina, back again to the last 28 years, the Filipina in Austria. Mrs. Check, this we don't. I hope she hears us. I'm really very grateful for what she's. Mrs. Check, here you here again. Thank you very much, and I'm also very inspired and impressed by the hard work and a lot of work that you are doing for your uh, people, for women, Filipino women in Austria and in Europe. It's very impressive. And surely we will find time to listen more to you and the other ladies who are here in Austria. But today we really want to keep the time for those speakers who come from other countries to us. And so I'm very happy now. And it's an absolute, absolute pleasure for me to introduce Miss, uh, Mrs. Merli Padan. We know each other for 10 years at least. I'm very grateful that you take the time to speak to us. And it's a very, very fantastic topic, permaculture, home gardens, the linchpin to food security and wholesome communities. So Mrs. Balam, the president of the Women's Federation of the Philippines and the director of the Women's Federation UN office in New York. We are very happy that you're here with us. The floor is yours, please. Thank you, Renate. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, greetings from New York and uh, to all my kababayan. Um, magandang gabi po and mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you so much. I am deeply grateful for this gathering and, and Women's Federation for World Peace Austria. Renate and Merle and uh, Dr. Maria Riel. Thank you for putting this event together. And as Filipino, um, we are filled with gratitude for this tremendous level of support that you have given us. Um, and I want to greet especially to the representative of the Philippine Embassy in Austria. I was there in 2016. And um, yeah, uh, Madame Sherilette and Madame Dolce. Thank you for making this event a part of our Philippine Embassy. And um, also to um, Mom Marjorie and uh, Mom Marizel and Mom Cecilia. I have no words but gratitude and respect to all the works that you do as women leaders, uh, pioneering the way of um, leadership and uh, just not just uh, surviving, but you are thriving and you're giving hope and you shine your light ever so brightly so that other Kababayans who needed help, you are there. And that to me is nothing short of heroism. And, and I thank you for that. 
Today, I'm going to speak about permaculture. This is something of a revolutionary um, idea. I mean, permaculture itself is not revolutionary. It's been started for thousands and thousands of years, even uh, by, the, uh, by the natives. Um, but the way we do it is something revolutionary. It is holistic. I say it is a linchpin to food security and um, um, wholesome communities. But there is one element that um, I think the world uh, is missing and it is the integration of character education, the education of heart. And so together with the young people, we have few young people here. Uh, I especially invited them to join and thank you guys. I know it's 3 a.m. in the Philippines in Bohol, but you know, they, they, dutifully they gladly you're happy right you guys are happy um sp spending your wee hours in the morning with us but i'm sure guys it will be worth it uh, but i'd like to introduce to you a healthy educational holistic and sustainable way of food production this one this is one of the projects in our women's fed philippines in a proud and grateful partnership with Women's Federation for World Peace Austria. And we are expanding to Brazil, the heart and lungs of the world, the Amazon. And we have our uh, Filipina representative here, which I will introduce to you later. And so this project is called the Permaculture Peace Garden Toward Holistic and Happy Communities for a Healthy Planet. So this project aims to solve food safety and food security, climate change, and um, by, under, by addressing the underlying root causes of humans' inability to manage food production and health of both human beings and the planet. And uh, we start by uh, empowering the heart of every human being. And also as uh, Dr. Maria Ryle, uh, explained earlier, the migration is such a big thing. The uh, for Philippines, uh, the trafficking of women and children. Uh, migration uh, is uh, some part a good good for Philippine economy, um, but there is a big um, so damaging, harmful social cost, which is the the breaking of the families and children growing with empty hearts. And, you know, there's this drug addiction and teenage pregnancy. And this is one way of uh, this project can be used. We can use this project as, uh, as a way, as a tool to get out of that um, horrible um, cycle of, of poverty and migration and um, just uh, breaking of the families. So um, this project, we integrate the holistic solutions through permaculture education. Um, the education meaning um, the ability to develop good character, love for nature, and, and um, eventually yield to food security. Uh, the social, economic, and environmental problems caused by human, human selfishness from individual level to global scale resulted in magnitude of harmful misuse and mismanagement of both the human, economic, and environmental resources. It is for this reason that uh, good character education um, be equally stressed with the skills and intellectual human development. Uh, the former president, Theodore Roosevelt, he explicitly emphasized this reasoning in his statement, to educate a man in mind and not in morals is to educate a menace to society. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic brought the world into a standstill, global health crisis in a magnitude never scaled before, implosion of world economy and disruption of society's established systems and social norms. The pandemic exposed the underlying weaknesses of a world order and governance system that ignored the core values and fundamentals of human life, the development of the heart. It's our heart senses. This became a visible challenge and dilemma to the current education system, um, which I observed in Philippines and in the world in general. Um, 
which questions how the need for fundamental values be taught. This is something that the current education must address and focus as um, while well, we go to philosophy, we need the, the support of the philosopher to back us up, right? That um, Aristotle, he said that uh, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. And quote, there has been a gap of knowledge in, in how the permaculture can be utilized in education, particularly as a tool for the character formation, food security and, and learning. So um, the, the, the end, our end goal is to make permaculture a part of the Philippine curriculum uh, where children are taught not just gardening, but it's really the philosophy and, and the systems of land management from early childhood so that, you know, uh, they can develop and grow their uh, relationship with nature as they, as they uh, grow older. Having lived half of my life surrounded by the majestic hills of, of um, and valleys of chocolate hills, Carmen Bohol, uh, where my childhood experiences as a farm girl, having collected so many joyful memories, and whether it's work or play, my fascinating interaction with the land and its vibrant floras and faunas in Bohol, it really positively influenced my understanding and the fundamental role that the nature play in, in, in the emotional and uh, spiritual development and physical health and in general, the early childhood development and the advancement, relating it to the advancement of the human race. If it works for me, I'm sure it will work for majority of, of the human race. So this time in partnership with the 10,000 Heroes League and um, this is a, a, a youth arm of the Women's Federation for World Peace Philippines. Um, we are starting this in Bohol and with the village, in my village, Muntisunting, Carmen Bohol, we explore permaculture education as an experiential and holistic character education for the development of heart and character for each person, especially in the young people. So that's why I call it as the linchpin to the healing of the planet and peace and development in the communities through the character formation and food security in the family. So with the hope that through this practice of permaculture, which is really, it's a restorative, regenerative way. It's the healing of the soil, the healing of the land, the uh, recapture, uh, the capturing of the carbon footprints, um, minimizing the carbon, carbon footprints. And so uh, with all this put together, we have uh, young leaders in Bohol, and our goal is to expand this young people to 10,000 heroes uh, by year 2027. And so they will be the vanguards of um, um, the community to discover the wellspring of happiness while stimulating the young people to recover their God-given original human nature and harnessing the fullest potentials of uh, as a beloved and precious children of God and as loving stewards of the planet. And uh, I'm going to introduce to you Jay. Jay has the PowerPoint. He's going to show us their big vision. Uh, but uh, this 10,000 heroes, I'd like to give you just a bit of an idea. Um, you know, Dr. Jose Rizal, we all know Dr. Jose Rizal, we immortalized him with our, with statues in every single municipality in the Philippines. He died um, by uh, um, uh, court martial. Oh no, he, he was shot at the uh, back behind. But uh, he became a hero because he died for the sake of the country, for the liberation of, of Philippines, for Philippines independence. But you know, the wars that we face is very different from the wars that we faced 100 years ago. We need new heroes. And um, you know, they said that in Philippines, we have another hero, another uh, breed of heroes, the OFWs. And we, you all know that, uh, our great women leaders in Austria, OFWs are, are the modern day heroes, they call our Philippine government call it. But you know, uh, if we have 10 million heroes all over the world, why is it that our country Philippines is still poor and suffering and there are many children who are still, who cannot eat and unhealthy? And uh, why is there still so much um, uh, disconnect in that? 
the way I see it is that as heroes, we, including me, a lot of our resources, we invested so much. We're willing to die for the sake of our family. We do anything. We clean the toilets. We crawl. Uh, every, you know, we sacrifice everything for the sake of our family, right? But then, you know, how much do we sacrifice for the sake of our country? If 10% of the money we send to, to the government, I mean, to, to our families on a monthly basis or yearly basis, only 10% of that is invested in the community. Imagine these young people who are, are mentored and coached and they're empowered, giving them a platform where they can shine. The, where um, the education and mentoring program, the quality of education, I mean, the experiential and raising up of young people, raising heroes. Imagine what it will do to our country. Our country will become the greatest country on earth if we have 10,000 heroes. If, Phil, if Jose Rizal was great, he was only one, but let's multiply. And one of the, the, the um, uh, project of Women's Fed Philippines was one mother, one hero. So isang nanay magpalaki ng isang bayani. And this is the Mother's Hearts Network where Merrily Blaschke is the country coordinator in, is in Austria. I am a product of mentoring. I was a product that I, uh, of, of someone who raised me up, who believed in my potentials. And I could be who I am now and I can uh, uh, serve the world because of a mentoring, because some great women leaders invested in me. So I ask, I'm, I'm asking each one of you, I know your potential is greater than mine. Your capacity, your resources are greater than mine. But if we put together our hearts and our love and our resources and, and uh, collectively support these young people in with a project that is specifically and strategically put there to save our planet and to serve our country, Philippines, which is permaculture. Having said that, I am going to introduce to you Jay. Jay Doidora is the Governor General of um, our uh, um, 10,000 Heroes League in Philippines. And after Jay, I'm going to introduce to you a great woman counselor from Brazil who is practicing permaculture, who caught the perma permaculture fever. And um, she's doing uh, leaps and bounds and great works in the Amazon area in Brazil, and she's probably Filipina. So first of all, Jay, um, Jay, it's your turn. Thank you, Thank so, you so much, much, everyone. Thank you so much, Mom Merle, for that very inspiring and stunning message for all of us. Wow. Mabuhay from the heart of Island Bohol, Philippines. My name is Jay Allison Doidora. I am the Governor General of 10,000 Heroes League. Distinguished women leaders, participants, good morning from my hometown and good evening to yours. Thank you for allowing me to be part and share to you what is 10,000 Heroes League and why we need this kind of organization as the role of youth in nation building. Here in this organization, my dream started to realize and inspired me and awakened me for achieving my goal, molding my talent, not for myself, but for the sake of others. I'm also one of the product of this organization last December 2018. I was conducted at Yojong, Peace Garden at the hometown of Mam Marili. And I can believe that yours truly will become the governor general and one who will lead my fellow youth to be more likely our national hero, Dr. Jose Rosal. He said, the youth is the hope of our nation. But the question is, where is the youth right now? To formally start, allow me to share my screen and a question, where are the youth? in the province of Bohol and how far we have gone through because of the inspiration to lead the youth in a straight towards their future that's introducing 10,000 Heroes League. There you go. Women's Federation for World Peace Philippines in partnership with the youth arm 10,000 Heroes League, raising leaders of heart and character. About us, 10,000 Heroes League is a youth arm of Women's Federation for World Peace Philippines, aiming to raise young leaders of heart and character, nurturing them to become principled, 
high achieving global citizen. Our vision, because we are visionary leader, we want to establish a network of principled, high achieving young Filipino citizen who are trailblazers in practicing altruism and patriotism to create a nation of peace and development, sustainable development. Our mission, together with the provincial and local government of Bohol, envis envisions to raise 10,000 young people of Bohol by the year 2027, using comprehensive leadership training programs and desirable innovative tools to empower the youth to become citizens of character and the leader of heart, serve the country, and love humanity. Strategic projects and grassroots-based activities are aimed at eliminating socioeconomic problems plaguing the youth and society such as 10 age pregnancy, mental health, and of course, the newly one we want to introduce to you, permaculture and vote buying. Our goal is to raise leaders of heart and character, food security and healing of planet through permaculture, mobilize critical mass of youth who are ardent and advocate of mental health and note to vote buying. And like to introduce to you because of her, we are inspired and we are always be inspired through the inspiration coming from the founder of 10,000 Heroes League, our very own Madam Marily Christina D. Barlan. Thank you so much, ma'am, for inspiring us to do this um, project or program to the youth, for the youth and for the Filipino youth. And here is our 10,000 Heroes League organizational chart. So yours truly is a governor general together with my constituent, Ms. Kristen Rose Bulaya, the deputy governor general, Ms. Yunjarina Fernandez, the secretary general, Ms. Jinky Hora, the finance officer, and together with our advisor, Mr. Dale Cyril Dehekashan. Our activities and programs, we have principles of peace, peace leadership, and Pure Love Talk. We have different activities and programs, North, East, West, South, and even the far flung areas in the province of Bohol. We will go there and educate you, educate your mind and educate your heart for you to become a global leader to serve the world and to serve, to become a future leader in the province of Bohol. Here, as you can see the screen, the education and partnership with stakeholders, peace education seminar for the teachers. Um, there are 30 participants, there are 30 teacher, teachers participants during the NSET. This is a Department of Education seminar one week, but through the part, partnering with the, the school, Department of Education, we are able to formula, formulate a formula on how to solve and make as a resolution to create a resolution to solve the 10-H pregnancy, HIV AIDS social media addiction, and even drug addiction of the youth today. And of course, not just teacher, not just Department of Education, we included also the interreligious dialogue, youth and religious leaders. We gathered 30 religious leaders from different backgrounds, such as Roman Catholic, Iglesia Ni Cristo, Baptist Church, Islam, or the Muslim community, the... Um, the Seventh-day Adventist, we gather them and collect their ideas on how to truly formulate such um, eloquent ideas to solve the rampant issues. Because, you know, it's not about, it's not Roman Catholic affected by 10 edge pregnancy. All of the religion are affected by these problems. So we gather them, we create formula, we brainstorm how we could really solve these issues in the youth context today especially in these trying times, this pandemic brought by COVID-19. Uh, this, this one was uh, last February 2020, and uh, the, the COVID-19 was started to arise here in the province of Bohol. Yet, we are strong to, to formulate such formula for the youth and for the Filipino youth. And of course, uh, we also extend it through our Facebook page, 10,000 Heroes League through our uh, series of talk. We named it Pure Love Talk. We named a different episode, I mean, episode for the youth to really uh, realize, utilize even social media. We have Facebook page and uh, truly 
because we have observed that the youth were being addicted into social media in a wrong way. That's why we in 10,000 Heroes League formulate and formula how to catch up the attention through different series addressing the problems of the youth today and how to cope up this problem. And yet, yeah, as you can see, we reached 10,000 views in our Facebook page, 10,000 Heroes League. We invited many advocates from international to local to answer and to share and uh, the problems as well, to share their ideas on the different context of problems. Next, we have the character education, Barangay Youth Leaders Peace Leadership Seminar. So 30 participants, most of those leaders sent to higher education leader, in, I mean, training, such as national leader, leadership training. We sent them there for them to realize their purpose, the value of being a youth, a role, the role, why we need to take ownership as a youth in making and making solution towards uh, peace and peace development in the province of Bohol. So as you can see, we also have Pure Love Tour Education, college students and high school students in the province of Bohol. We go to the far flung areas, high school to colleges. So uh, we are able to educate them adhering to sexual integrity, purity, no to sex before marriage and no sex after marriage. That's why we educated them. And lastly, and next, sorry, we in partner with the PNP or the Philippine National Police Special Action Force together with the Armed Forces of the Philippines, uh, 47 Infantry Katapatan Battalion. We in partnering with them through the many activities such as three growing activity so that we could really uh, give back and help our Mother Earth regenerate. And lastly, healing of planet through service project. Local international volunteers coming come to Carmen Bohol to volunteer, to be our one of the volunteers to really show that they love our Mother Earth. To regenerate it in a healthy way, we could truly uh, plant more seeds. Three of hope. And as you can see, sa mga Pilipino po natin, nakikita po natin dito yung food forest, local, and uh, nagtutulungan po. We have this we called bayanihan, tulong-tulong para sa ating mamamayan at sa ating likas na, kayaman, likas na yaman. And I would like to announce that our calendar of activities, uh, community class development permaculture, this will be on July 17 to 18. And here is Caravan about permaculture, month of June and July, both buying education program drive, month of August. So as you can see in the picture, happy heart, healthy, organic produce. So you can see the beautiful image of our farmers associating with the nutritional value of permaculture. And the Mulavi Forest Airbnb, bed and breakfast. Yeah. This is Yojong Peace Garden, where the hometown of Ma'am Marily Christina Barlan. So 10,000 Heroes Strategic Planning and about permaculture meeting with officers and sponsors from United States of America. How we formulate detailed by detailed how we could really become successful for this permaculture. And for the permaculture pioneer kit, we identified out of 3,000 families in the province of Bohol, we identified 120 families will receive $100 starting kit that includes seeds, seedlings, coaching, seminars, and workshop. There will be 120 families and 100 uh, multiplied by $100, there will be uh, 12,000 to be spent off. So uh, I would like to end this with a quote from our Dr. Jose Rizal. On this battlefield, man has no better weapon than this intelligence. No other force but his heart. So, I hope that we are hoping that you will be with us in solving and eradicating the rampant issues in the society today. We believe that through financially and morally support, you can help us as women leaders 
and as our mother. We called you mother because you gave us chance and hope to become a youth leader in this country. And achieving one common goal to solve the issue of teenage pregnancy, mental health, HIV AIDS, drug addiction, and vote buying. And help us to take care of the environment in a healthy way through permaculture. Once this problem will be solved, we will be living a happy life and comfortable life. This to realize and regenerate our Mother Earth today. So we'd like to end this. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Kamsamnida, thank you. And once again, good morning and good evening to you. Wow, amazing, inspiring. Thank you, Jay. Uh, yeah. Don't you want to raise more heroes and multiply Jay by 10,000? How do you think <laughs> Philippines will become a great country? Um, so the the maybe uh, I'll call our uh, great friend. Uh, she's a Filipina and we're proud to, to have her. Uh, she is uh, making her... Uh, breaking grounds and making history in the Amazon area in, in Brazil. Uh, she established the Women's Federation for World Peace there, uh, five, five states. And she's also, she just won. She was uh, elected as a city councilor in uh, her state, in her city of uh, Amapa. And um, with 500,000 constituents. And uh, she's doing permaculture together with the local government. She's gonna share to us how um, this uh, initiative can grow in partnership with the local government and uh, as legislator. And I am proud to welcome uh, Councillor Diosdada Ladica dos Santos from Brazil. Councillor Dada, are you there? Let me see. Oh, there you go. The floor is yours. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon from Brazil. Good morning in the Philippines. Good afternoon, in, good evening in the Europe, especially in Austria. So I am very grateful to be here. It is very nice to hear everyone, especially the works of our Filipinos. I'm very emotional to see everyone because, you know, I am here in Brazil, in the region five of the north of Brazil, that is the uh, Amazon region. And there more than almost 30 years, but uh, really, to hear the network of women through the Women's Federation is very, really satisfying. Because I can see that there are so many people who are investing their hearts to, to change other people or to help other people through service. So this is really a great chance for us to develop ourselves in our heart, in our mind, in our character, and uh, serve as one family. Uh, here in the, my region, here Amazonia region, I stayed here in Amapa, Amapa state of Amapa in, in Brazil. Uh, we are living just beside the Amazon River. So seeing the news and the report about permaculture this is very you know interesting the permaculture is not a new system or not a new work but this is already uh, used uh, since before in the originally originally with the native people here in the north uh, the native people is very still active and uh, communities here are influenced with the native people so the the practice of permaculture is even be before they were born since from their ancestors to generations and generations but there are some you know de disregulation 
of our environment, of our nature, of our or plant of our planet, because there are many uh, people who have no character at all and and have many actions towards our resources, our natural resources, for using everywhere in the forest, in the water, in the land, and in the air. So many for using. So now I think the permaculture can help to start a new community service and community living because permaculture not, is not uh, is, is a good way for us to live together with harmony with the nature and together with the people. So this is really very inspiring to, hear, to, to hear about this project. And uh, I really want to learn and, and know more, especially of what is happening in my island in Bohol. I'm very, I'm very, very, I miss very much Bohol because <laughs> I did not visit there, but knowing this 10,000 heroes, wow, this is amazing. I can, I can see the future, the bright future towards our nation. So I can see that this is really amazing work and I want to be a part of this 10,000 because I have family, I have my nephews and have my, my tribe in Bohol. So that's why I'm, I am here because I want to be a part and my family want to be a part of this 10 heroes uh, league in, in the Bohol province as they are initiated with our Madam Merley. Thank you very much for this investment, Madam Merley. I can see hope in our nation. I can see that this is a very good initiative. And I, and I hope that all our Filipinas here can, Filipinas and, and our colleagues here can, can uh, embrace this project because for me, it is wonderful. I can see that I can guide my my youth in my in my tribe. Okay, so thank you very much for this opportunity. I want to welcome all of you to visit here in the Amazon because maybe maybe you can hear so much news and media about you know many things bad happening here, né? Uh, like uh, a far far in the forest and everything. But actually, the reality is not that. So, I hope you can visit us here in the Amazon and see the beauty of natural resources here that is still original and natural. So I hope uh, someday we can meet together. Thank you very much and God bless for this event. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dada. It's really amazing. Back to you, Renate. Thank you very much, Yemeli. And thank you very much for bringing this inspiring people and this inspiring program to us. Uh, we want all to come to Philippines now or to Brazil and visit and learn and get inspired. Thank you so much. I was also want to say that please, if you have questions, then write them in the chat. I forgot to say in the beginning, but there's still time to do it. We have a little bit more time. And to give you time to write and think about the question, we now have a, a short cultural interlude and you will be surprised whom are you going to see and listen to. So I ask please our technician to come with our little entertainment. Thank you very much. Ferdinand, I'm looking forward to hear your poem. The floor is yours. Thank you, Esther. Des Regenbogens Traum. Rot, gelb, orange, violett und weiß. Die Farben glitzern in den Sonnenstrahlen und spannen einen Bogen. Über der Bäume und der Wiese frischem Grün. Nach dem Regen und dem Sturm. 
Sie funkeln in dem Lichte auf ihrem Weg zum Himmel wie eine Brücke, auf der ich wandern könnte in das Elysium. Regenbogen, was möchtest du mir sagen? Wenn dein Herz in mein Gemälde taucht und sich mit mir freut, bringe ich dich in das Land, nach dem du dich sehnst. Weit hinter dem Horizont. Ein Land, in dem die Blumen sind wie Bäume, die Farben so bunt wie Träume, reines, klares Wasser fließt, in dem die Menschen Liebe atmen, dich nicht aus Gier verraten, nicht mit ihrem Neid verfolgen, keine schlechten Worte reden, dich in Frieden leben lassen, auch wenn dich eine andere Farbe ziert, du eine andere Sprache sprichst, kurz, ein Hauch des Paradieses sei dir gegönnt, wenn du dich von meinen Farben dorthin tragen ließest. Thank you very much for listening. This was today's reading. I am looking forward again to seeing you next week again, same time, same channel. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for the not another poem that sprung from the lightness of your pen. Now let's hear Merle with the poem Rainbow. Merle, the stage is yours. Rainbow. Rainbow, your colors shine on my dim and solitary trail. Rainbow, you are talking bright, ending this empty night, making my heart jump in the light, giving joy to a searching mind, painting colors in the sky, bringing warmth to human soul, Climbing out of mist and haze, playing with the sun's sparkling rays, leaving me with an astonished gaze. Rainbow, your colors tell your tale. You clear away the fog, making me think of God, who, as a lonely, Wanderer, walk with me this gloomy ways. Who, after having built this bridge of hope, doesn't want to waste more time to share with us his love and reach your heart and mind. Thank you, dear, for this very beautiful poem. Thank you very much. This couple of Plaske, Ferdinand and Merle, Sequila Plaske. Thank you for this beautiful poem. And we thank also Mrs. Esther Platzer for making these wonder wonderful videos. And it's not the only one. So you can look for this channel and you will find many nice videos. And this all happened in the time of Corona. So. Many people get very creative in a time when you are limited to do big things, you do nice small things. So now is the time for question and answer. Uh, but also I want to mention that we had an attendance of the embassy of Kenya. I don't know if Her Excellency Mokaya Arena is still here, but somehow we saw that she was also listening, yes. Now is the time for question and answer, uh, but also I want to mention that we had an attendance of the embassy of Kenya. I don't know if Her Excellency Mokaya Arena is still here, but somehow we saw that she was also listening. Yes, Mrs. Mo Excellency Mokaya, would you like to say a word to us? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Renate. And um, 
Guten Abend. Good evening. Good afternoon, New York. Is it good morning in the Philippines? And in Brazil, is it good afternoon? And everybody who is here, I'm very pleased to have joined uh, uh, this uh, program. I joined in late because I was coming from another meeting, but it's worthwhile to have joined. Um, I recently met Renate, uh, Dr. Maria Real, Ingrid, and uh, a team from the WFWP, uh, which is an organization with a very noble objective to promote peace through worldwide um, uh, networking of women. Um, the experiences that you have shared are really stimulating. Indeed, um, I want to agree that to raise the profile and status of women is to raise and uplift the status of our communities, our societies, our nations and the entire, and the entire globe. Um, the problems that uh, you have shared from uh, the Philippines are problems that are experienced even in Kenya. I'm sure they're experienced in other countries. So they are common problems to all of us. I was very interested at um, what Mali uh, Balang from New York uh, talked about. Essentially, if I could just sum it up, is that um, permaculture, the way it's being done right now, it's uh, an ancient practice. Mm -hmm. uh, which is being modernized and it is good to make it a way of life. It's a good thing, you know, and it's worth emulating. The key place of nature in our growth and development is something that we cannot overemphasize. I completely agree with that. I also grew up in the countryside in Kenya and I remember my younger days growing up in the nature, playing with no worries at all, like the kind of worries the modern generation is faced with. Mm -hmm. And I believe that really contributed to my formation and the development and well being. I've learned very good concepts like the 10,000 Heroes League. That's a very good, <laughs> beautiful uh, program. The Interfaith Harmony Week that you have is something that we can borrow from as other countries. I think you really did very well. And indeed, I agree that we must heal the planet uh, because we don't take care of nature. I know that it can be very harsh towards us. So it is really something that we should take as a calling for everyone. The Heroes Caravan uh, about the permaculture also was quite impressive. Not to mention the interlude, which is really <laughs> it's been very, very interesting as well. So I'm glad I joined and I've learned a lot and I still look forward to continuing to partner and, uh, and learn much more and uh, contribute towards each other's growth. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Mrs. Mukaya Orina. Thank you so much that out of the spot you talk so nicely and that the Philippine colleagues could inspire you. We are very grateful for that because this was actually one of our ideas when we started this side event a few weeks ago, that we can put to the front uh, projects that can help each other and inspire each other. And I'm always admiring Merli so much because she puts this education of heart and character top front. And I think it's so important because it's the way people are, the way people think and feel. This is the way society is going to be. So this 1,000, 10,000 heroes in the Philippines, we need to multiply them everywhere in the world. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, I would, I'm still looking for questions. We, all, we, have, we had with us Mr. Narada, whom you remember from the side event, and he had to leave. He leaves his email address in the chat. So if you want to write it down and get back to him, he is very pleased 
that we, there is such an emphasis on life in the rural areas and to raise the quality and to be so excited about it because that has also been his topic for many years and maybe even decades. Why does everybody want to live in a city? Why not stay in the countryside and make life worthwhile living there? If there, if there are any more questions, please write them down because I don't see you on the screen. Then we can ask the questions. Of course, it's getting late. We started late, but many of the Philippine ladies are working in the, as nurses. And so this is the nursing hours are till 7, 7.30. So this is why it couldn't be earlier. Uh, Renate, um, I just want to take this opportunity before we, we answer questions, if there are any. But I, I, I want to thank Women's Federation Austria for uh, supporting us all the way. That partnership since 20, 2013 until now since we had our um, the super typhoon in Tacloban you donated money and scholarship for our young people all the way until now and this permaculture as we pioneer this uh, permaculture project in Bohol um, you are financing some of our workshops and and that to us it means the world to us and I'm sure that you know it will make a world of difference thank you Thank you so much, Mrs. Merli Fanlan. It's when you talk, then it becomes so much worthwhile to invest in you <laughs> and for young people that you brought to us also. Um, maybe Maria Ri, do you want to say something? You want a final word of, of because there's no questions coming in. Maybe Maya, you want to end, add a final word from your side. You mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much, Renate, and thank you all the participants. I, um, in my work, I met many people from many different countries, and somehow, I think in in our time, in even in this one and a half year of COVID crisis, where all people are touched with. Uh, with uh, the situation of lockdown and to be like uh, uh, groups, like families. We came back to our families, to our children, our grandchildren, and we learned how much we need each other, how much uh, through sharing of our experiences and blessings, what we receive through, through our life uh, lifetime, how we can improve the life of our environment. And if people are satisfied and happy, if we learn happiness in a very, um, in the situations around us, how we can improve. So not only big steps, but we are thinking big. We receive news from all over the world, but we act locally. So we learned a lot again, and we can apply it in our family, with ourselves, with our husbands, our children, our, our friends. So thank you very much again to, through listening, we, had, we learned a lot. Yeah. And thank you also for the, for the poems and for, uh, for so many Filipino ladies living also in Austria and always thinking on their relatives in their respective country. So thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Any final words? Is there someone who wants to say something? Come in with the last word. Mrs. Platza is also here, the one, the lady who makes the beautiful videos. Do you want to introduce yourself shortly that we can see you? I don't think she's here. I think she's working. Yeah, I just saw her. Ah, no, she's not working. Is she here? I don't yeah, know. Esther is here. I see Esther. 
Oh, oh no! Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful, Esther. Thank you. You look stunning. Yeah, I have to unmute. She has to unmute. To unmute. And there Can you, you go. Now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just came back from work. I I'm really sorry. I was I wanted to do, but I have a lot of guests. So again, thank you. But I was able to to hear a little bit of the talks of Merli. Merli, hi, Merli Barla and Renate. Thank you also, and all <laughs> of the guests. I'm really so happy, and I'm really very very happy. And also, Maricel, thank you for for your. I didn't hear how you talk, Maricel. Sorry, I was not. I was working. But anyway, I told the Radi Renate, as soon I will be in pension, I have still three years to work. So, but I will be full power when everything is already settled. So don't worry, guys. I know I can be a little bit late once in a while when we have our Zoom, but I will try my best to be able to join. And I'm really all support, all my my support and my husband's support is also for the women's federation for world peace and i'm really very happy to be with a group and also i'm trying to to uh, to, to talk about this to the community here in austria not only to the filipinos but all over the world and i hope merli's uh, project in the philippines will really be a success and i'm really into it and i'm really going to make it a a my also my dream to be able to help and i would like to say thank you again to everybody sorry i'm late but i'm here so at least i was able to join i'm happy to see you all thank you thank esther you so renate there is a question yeah yeah there's a question from our Mar Mar marjorie um Pakistan. yeah I want to ask about the 10,000 heroes. It's, re it's really impressive, thank you. But how can we multiply it? Is that exclusive to Bohol? Thank you for asking, Ma Marjorie. No, it's not exclusive for Bohol, it's meant for the world. What we do right now is just, uh, it's more like a template, uh, a small model uh, for everyone. But uh, we put together the formula and uh, our, our dream is to have the heroes establish their own communal peace garden uh, together with the Sangguniang Kabataan in every barangay. And um, Buhol, we just use it as a yung small, na scalable area, but it is meant to go all the way to the Philippines and all over the world. And the, the evidence of that is Brazil is here. Um, Councillor Dada. We just put together an event two weeks ago and she's doing it by leaps and bounds together with the first lady of their states and the mayors and the councillors there. So, and she's one of our 10,000 heroes. 10,000 heroes is not just young person, but you can be one of the 10,000 heroes. It's, it's intergenerational. So yes, we can expand it anywhere in the world as, as long as the heart is willing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melly. Yeah, this sounds really hopeful. So, thank you. Thank you very much. I really want to take the time now because it's getting really late to say thank you to all who participated, to say thank you to the Embassy of um, Philippines, to the Embassy of Kenya. Thank you very much. Thank you also to the very beautiful ladies who are living in Austria and representing the Filipino women, the Filipino diaspora. It's not only women, but I think it's many more women than men. We also say thank you to, the, to Brazil, that is their sister she was joining us. And also Mr. J. Dora, who is stood up in the middle of the night to be with us. Thank you so much. We have to invite you more often to speak to our young people. Yeah. We have to set up something for this. Yeah, thank you very much. And I thank everyone who was listening this last one and a half hours. That you stood with us. I hope you're inspired. And if there's any ideas or more questions, we can exchange email addresses so the communication can continue. Thank you so right. much. Thank you. Thank you, thank yeah. you Renate. 
And Merle Vlashke, my dear Mayor, Merle Vlashke, thank you so much for all the work that you do. It's because of your heart connection that all these women, I'm so happy to meet all these um, great women in Europe. Yeah, I look forward to meet you in person. Yes, come to Austria. Thank you so much. Ferdinand, thank you for your lovely yeah. poetry. I would so like to hand over to Mary. For a very final word. Thank you so yeah, much, everyone. You. Good Thank night. <laughs> who has attended this meeting, especially also those who work behind the scene to make it happen. There were valuable insights how to sustain ourselves on a small level regarding how to make a living. These ideas can help people in their difficult living circumstances as well as the planet with the climate crisis. Once again, I want to thank everybody for attending and I'm looking forward to follow up meetings in the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melly. Yeah, this sounds really hopeful. So, thank you. Thank you very much. I really want to take the time now because it's getting really late to say thank you to all who participated, to say thank you to the Embassy of um, Philippines, to the Embassy of Kenya. Thank you very much. Thank you also to the very beautiful ladies who are living in Austria and representing the Filipino women, the Filipino diaspora. It's not only women, but I think it's many more women than men. We also say thank you to the to Brazil, that is dear sister she was joining us, and also Mr. J. Dora, who is stood up in the middle of the night to be with us. Thank you so much. We have to invite you more often to speak to our young people. This is, we have to set up something for this. Yeah, thank you very much. And I thank everyone who was.